Hello, niggas. Niggas, do you hear me? I am keeping that woman. You are, you are throwing it out. You are throwing it away. Well, keep the receipts for yourself. You're an Indian giver. I cannot believe this shit. Got a little soul tox. Little soul tox, huh? Detox and recovery water. <laughs> yeah, this is on Amazon right now. Why don't y'all go over there and buy all of this shit? What is this? A super antioxidant? Immune boost, 11 amino acids, joint and muscle recovery. That's what I'm drinking on right now, a little soul tox. But I ain't even ready to promote that right now. What's, uh, I'm promoting the Relationship Masterclass. The Masterclass for Cyber Monday. Starting, it started, it started at 11.05, yeah. From 11.05 uh, a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Masterclass is 50% off, right? From 11 a.m. till midnight tonight, it's 50% off. Listen, guys, let me just keep it 100. Let me just keep it a stack with you. I need you guys to blow this master class through the roof. The content is crazy, five and a half hours of content. You get lifetime access. Uh, it's four modules, exercises, and tool books. We still get a few scragglers in the email account saying they don't know what they've done or not. They don't know. It's really not complicated. You sign up with an email and a password. That very same email and password you sign up with, that's it. That's absolutely it. What do you mean, Zoe? Well, guess what? I got an app on my phone right now called Teachable. I go to Teachable. Here it is right here. I go to Teachable. I pop in my email address and my password, and guess what happens? I'm in the course. The whole entire course is right there. Listen, I am pushing my master class strong today, Cyber Monday, right? Go to ZoeWhatMasterclass.com. Why am I pushing it so strong today? Even though it's 50% off. Let me tell you why. Because this documentary is kicking my ass in terms of funding. And shout out to A. Britt and, and Sugar Crisp and, and Mimi. In the chat room, my moderators, they have been pushing the envelope. But this documentary needs some support. And instead of asking you to donate, I would love to just give you a product that is really an investment uh, 
you know, within yourself. It's really a self-investment. So on this Cyber Monday, man, please get over to ZoeWhatMasterclass.com, put in the discount code Cyber Monday and get 50% off. If I get notifications that we are uh, moving some today, my, my goal, this is my goal. If we can get within the next 12 hours, if we can get 300 orders, that would be great in the next 12 hours. Let's push to do that. Share this uh, promo with your friends who might be going through relationship issues. It is the holidays and a lot of people need this information in order to get through the holidays. Uh, and trust me, this is gonna take your ass on a journey. So please, without a doubt, share the link with your friends uh, who may be in relationship peril. Get them over there right now to zowhatmasterclass.com. Now, let's move on to the next things we have to promote. Is Jeff Brown uh, in, is he in here with us? With bells on nigga. Can I see I am, Jeff yeah. Brown? I am here, nigga. Can we see him? Because the people want to see Jeff. Look, niggas. There is Sarah. I see Sarah. Hey, Sarah. All right, hey, so Bruno. while we're dealing with that, let me get right over to X Wolf. X Wolf, I'm on this X Wolf. Hey, bruh, Travis, homeboy from X Wolf. I'm out, pimp. I'm gonna need I, I'm gonna need to re up, homeboy. You know what it is? Let me tell you something right now. I don't endorse nothing I can't use. This soul water, this business is cool. X Wolf, I'm on it. X Wolf, the black owned version of Nugenics. I'm not saying it is Nugenics. I'm not saying it has the same ingredients as Nugenix. What I am saying is, this is what I liken it to, so you can get a grasp of what type of product it is. It is a testosterone booster. Any brothers that are over 30, over 40, understand that there's a, you know, there's a little fogginess that comes with a decrease in testosterone as you get older and older. Please don't play yourself Go support this black-owned business at X Labs Supps, S -U -P -P -S com. He told me that the sales were pretty good for a couple of months, and then they started to wane a little bit. Listen, keep the erection, fellas. Keep the stiffy. Get out there and support this, brother. You see the ingredients. Can you make that a little bit bigger? Look at the ingredients. Take a look at the ingredients. A lot of y'all got a lot of pork chitlin juice up around your prostate area. And you know your prostate is like a scared child amongst all the pork liquids you have inside your body. Pig liquid? You want to keep your woman, huh? You want to keep her happy? You want to, first off, if you got good dick, you can keep an unhappy woman. Let me <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. If you putting down the good wood from the good Lord, <laughs> let me tell you something, brother. They yeah. gonna tolerate Oh, you fuck shit. Tell me I'm lying. Uh, yeah. Jeff, am I lying? Uh, sir, let me tell you something. You can get a lot of mileage out of life with effective penis. If you if you if you lay in pipe down proper, you can eat her kids' snacks and drive her car, and she ain't gonna say much. <laughs> you can have a juice box. <laughs> kids, kids, mad. How come John be eating the hot pockets all the time? You can eat all that shit. All them little you know bitty circle cookies. What them little cookies called? Do them you little know baby Oreos. You can fuck all baby. them up. Baby. All them little teddy bears. The teddy grams. Baby, 
Baby, do you know why John gets to eat the Hot Pockets all the time? Because John beats the Hot Pocket all the time. Now sit back, put your seatbelt on, and just eat the rest of them Jello cups. And then when they do muster up the strength to leave, it's damn near a psychotic break. They be acting like oh, yeah. Bilbo Baggins. Because they digmatize with- Remember when Bilbo Baggins had to give up the ring of power to Gandalf? Bro. You're trying to steal it from me. It's mine. It's my That's, own. My precious. That, <laughs> it, if, if we could get young black men to master self-hypnotism the way they have mastered digmatism, we would rule the world. Okay, that's a whole nother point. Thanks for fucking off the joke, okay. Mr. Profundity. I'm just saying. If uh, we could, X Wolf. we was just having a great time promoting okay. a product about okay. dick juice. Well, and then let, let's let's get back on cockadoodle doo <laughs> Get back over there. Okay, fellas, let's let me God put to you. Damn this it, way. Jeff. <laughs> do you know why? Do you know why this is an excellent uh? An, an excellent thing to own, especially as you hopefully wean yourself off of animal protein. Um, <laughs> this is because this product literally will turn your dick into the evil arch villain it once was when you were 19. But imagine <laughs> having that dick with your brain now. All right, thank you. This should be called rule the world pills. Sober us up with the truth. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Hi. I know you said you was going to be here. Yes, sir. And now you're not here. Yes, but I sir. had this for you. You could take you got, that. I you got, got, I got oh, this. Oh, man. I got a whole nother pound of this for you. Brother, I will come get it. I'll come over there and get that. Nah, we could. We good, nigga. We on lockdown. Stay your ass where you at. Listen, total package <laughs> energy. <laughs> total Dumbass. package energy. Dumbass. Listen, I'm so excited about total package energy. Let me tell you what. They sent me a re-up on all of these, right? What is that? Is that me? Is my Not me. Might be my mic. Anyway. Total Package Energy sent me my re up. I got the vitamin C. I take, first off, in this package, you get 36 as a quantity. This is how they come in a packet. So you can choose a quantity of 36, Total Package Energy, B12, or vitamin C. In this one is B12. What I do typically I take three vitamin C's every morning. That's a thousand milligrams of eight times the absorption power of tablets. This stuff was created and manufactured on a nanotechnology level. You put it underneath your tongue, you let it absorb directly into your bloodstream. Listen, I don't know what the fuck they got out there because I ain't never seen a flu mutate to the point where somebody got to wear a goddamn pacemaker forever now. Well, you know, this flu, this this, this motherfucking SARS COVID-19 shit done revealed a weakness in my heart, and now uh, I got emergency surgery to go get a goddamn pacemaker. What? What flu does that? Uh, Here's who who does it from which end? Who who designs it? And how? Wait, hold on, Jeff. This is a promo. Okay. Because <laughs> Jeff is about to go into the lab. He's going to bring yes, up sir. Bill Gates. He for- <laughs> you know, come on, man. Okay, but, I'm going to put some of that in the ramp. But what I'm saying is, as Jeff speaks, and I agree with Jeff about prevention, about your diet, man, take this goddamn vitamin C. Got this you. shit is cracking out here. Whatever the fuck they got out here is cracking. Total package energy is something I endorse. I had three of these this morning. I had three vitamin C's this morning. I had three B12s this morning. And I had, according 
to the manufacturer. He told me not to OD on the total package energy. Total package energy is right here. I told you. He said, don't take two of these or you're going to be up for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I took one. Why is uh, Zoe painting his energy. car with a paintbrush? I'm trying to <laughs> he paint his car with a paintbrush. <laughs> because I've done everything else. I've read every book I own twice hey, this man, weekend. I'm on that shit because we don't know. Listen, man, we don't know what the fuck they got in store for us. Mm. Now, also Bruh. on the Cyber Monday tip, please go <gasps> cash mob. You know, total package energy. Please, please, please support them big time. Push through tonight. Everything is Cyber Monday, right? So everybody should go out and support this black owned business out of Oakland, California. Support them right now. Uh, total package energy. Go cash mob them. Get their pea protein. Get their vitamins uh, that they have in these little convenient packets. Support, 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 support. Total package energy. Dot com. All of the businesses I'm putting in front of you, go support them big, 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 big time. Also, go to Amazon and order the relationship dismount. How to stick the landing when exiting a toxic relationship. It's available in three different formats. That is Kindle, Audible, as well as paperback. Go get it right now. Go, 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 go get it right now yes that's me the author of the relationship dismount how to stick the landing when exiting a toxic relationship go to amazon.com that's the only way you can get that particular book the only way you can get it is through amazon.com also go to my website i am zowilliams.com and purchase the follow-up the holographic relationship book I still have physical copies. I went to the post office yesterday for a lot of orders that were pending. Uh, we got an order in yesterday. Listen, Cyber Monday, go buy out all my remaining copies. Let's hit them. Let's, let's go there right now. I am zowilliams.com. Also, the hurricane report. We got to support the hurricane report. The hurricane report is under construction right now. But we need you guys to support this brand big time. Write it, take action, maintain freedom. Why are you supporting them? Because they're the Al Jazeera of black folks in America. Whether you call yourself ADOS or FBA, they are the Al Jazeera of black folk. And I get a lot of my stories from them. They are currently building their website. Please support them by purchasing their merch. All right? Okay. I think we're about done. Jeff, do you have something to support, my brother? Uh, please support me this week on uh, D.L. Hughley Uncut. I will be on the program uh, this Friday, at least it's Thursday and Friday, and on the air with him, check your airwaves the rest of the week. And uh, coming back very, 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 very soon the, is the, Giraffe Falls. Giraffe Falls coming back he's soon. He's lying. No, he's not. This shit will be for two weeks. It's <laughs> my ass, nigga. <laughs> he showed me over two weeks. He'd be like, you know, I'm busy. Fuck that show, I'm busy. Nigga. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, so I'm real. I'm uh, speaking of that. Uh, there is a project that. Uh, imagine. Imagine. Uh, shaft. Meets the Fast and the Furious, uh, but told like the story of This Is Us in the ghetto, written by me. Wow. Wow. It's dope, bro. It's dope. It's dope. I'm going to go on and brag on it. Big okay. Herc 916, shout out to you. Shout out to Robert Hines. Uh, 
y'all finna see some shit. I, I, I wrote some shit up. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, I don't believe you. No, I <laughs> fuck with Jeff. No, Jeff is one of the most talented writers in Hollywood. Everybody knows it. He gets credit for it. Uh, let me shout out Mario Turner. He's the first person to get the Cyber Monday sale for the Zo What Masterclass. Please go Mario! to ZoeWhatMasterclass.com. <sighs> Thank you. Mario Turner. Every time I see somebody, every time I get an alert here, I will shout you out. Let's make this a monumental success. That's order number one, 299 to go. Let's get there today, everybody. 50% off. Support that. Now let's get into our current events. Jeff, I got a lot of crazy shit for us to talk about, and I'm going to need you to limit yourself to three rants per show. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Because this nigga got his own rant section and then on top of that, he rants in between rants. Yes. Is this not true, Jeff? Am I making up some shit? This is so true. This is so true. All right, so Uh, let's go to the first story. Let's just talk about... Let's just get it the fuck out the way. Mike Tyson and Roy Jones fight, and then subsequently the Nate Robinson and Paul fight. Let's just talk about it. Jeff, your thoughts on... Man... Uh, first off, let's let's start with Tyson and and Roy Jones. Were we robbed? Did we get jobbed on that pay per view? Uh, if you paid for it, no, you didn't. You got what you deserved because it was it was vulturistic, right? Um, as a as a as one who dabbled with boxing, mm-hmm. who you know, I, I've gone as far as training boxers uh, here at Villa Park, bro. With your boy Fausto. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. I love boxing, man. I love that science. I, I, it's Mike Tyson, one of my favorites, bro. Right behind the. You were talking about my two favorite boxers. Oh, shit. Sorry, Sugar Ray. Uh, my three under Muhammad Ali. Yeah, there's my box in Mount Rushmore. Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, and Sugar Ray Leonard. That's my boxing Mount Rushmore. So you talk about two dudes that so wait, I love, wait, 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 that wait. I respect. Are you telling me? Are you telling me Mayweather is not on your Mount Rushmore? No. Wow. No. He gets honorable mention. Wow. He gets honorable mention. He's fifth. He's fifth. If I can have five, he's fifth. But I don't know, because then Shane Mosley, for what I look for in boxers, Shane Mosley. But then now we're getting off the page with Mayweather because he's a goddamn freak of nature. He's he's the, the once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime. I, I got to give him that. But back to... to uh, Roy and Mike. I had no interest in seeing this because the all it did for me is let me know what I knew already. That if you in shape in your 50s, you'll whoop a regular nigga's ass. I already knew that. <laughs> I already knew that. I didn't come close to having to do that a couple of times. So <laughs> it, it, it ain't about that. For me, I know the damage no that a boxer Whitaker. can do to a human being. No, no, Pernell Whitaker. No, rest in peace, bro. See, there you go. The genius. No, Pacquiao. The genius. Who, Pacquiao? Yeah. Not on my Mount Rushmore. I got a who I'm gonna put him over. Now you're getting into who I'm gonna put him over. And now you're getting in. Into... Right. Well, but I didn't want. I had no interest in seeing this at all, so I didn't look at it. I, I it just hurt my heart because Snoop Dogg was clowning. What'd you think oh. of Snoop? Nigga. <laughs> His commentation. Nigga. 
His commentary Shout out was to crazy, Snoop. right? Oh my God! When he start, oh, when he started Lord. singing, nigga, I was on one knee. When he was, well, first when he went, oh Lord, <laughs> oh Lord, I, I love said, Snoop. God so, damn, you know what I love Snoop. about Snoop? Snoop Dogg has pulled off the ultimate social caper. Right. Snoop Dogg ain't got to be nobody but Snoop Dogg anywhere. <laughs> and you are honored to have him. That is that is at any backyard party. That is at the White House. When when Joe get in the White House, Snoop can walk up to the gate in Chucks and go tell Joe Snoop out here. Oh and Lord, whoa, that's he who Snoop singing Dogg him. Is. I oh. fucking love Snoop Dogg. I love Snoop, man. I'm a huge Snoop fan. Snoop is Snoop. <laughs> is what the American dream was never supposed to be. Hey man, Snoop was amazing. He was like, they look like two of my uncles out here fighting. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and let me just say this, man. Um, the only one who got the analysis correct was Tony Atlas. And he said it before the fight. He said... In order for Roy to be great, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, and add my own shit. In order for Roy to be really great, Roy has to regain his athleticism. And at 51, you, I don't see him regaining his athleticism. Roy is an intelligent fighter. He's a smart fighter, but he's always been an unorthodox fighter. And he relied on his quickness and his athleticism. And of course, he had power in both hands. So he relied on a lot of movement to get his shit done. But when he starts slowing down, that's when he started getting hit right. Uh, Tony, uh, did I say Tony Atlas? My bad. I didn't mean to say Tony Atlas. You Teddy. Know huh? Teddy. Teddy Atlas. Teddy Atlas. Pardon me. I'm thinking of the goddamn wrestler. Well. But let me, let me, let me finish this yeah. thought. Uh, again, he was saying that, you know, when he started to slow down, he, he started to get caught up to. And people start, you know, socking the shit out of him and knocking him out in brutal kind of ways. Uh, he said one thing about Mike Tyson is Customato gave him fundamentals. Like, he is a fundamentally sound boxer when he's at the top of his game. He is a fundamentally sound motherfucker. And you saw some of that. And, and what I saw was maybe Tyson holding back a little bit because he really didn't want to fuck dude up. And I think, he, I think he scored more. I think he punched more. And I think they just did this for, you know, entertainment's sake. But Tyson actually won that exhibition. What are your thoughts? Uh, one, yes, and let me co-sign on Roy Jones. Uh, to be honest, the most profound in a uh, person speaking on Roy Roy Jones I've ever heard. Well, it's me. Uh, Whoa. Whoa. Roy, Roy Jones being my favorite right under Muhammad Ali and above Mike Tyson. Roy Jones never fought like a man. He fought like a tiger a chicken, a monkey, a dog, a lion, a cat, at will. He could change which animal he was imitating, and you could see it, it was poetry. And he had cat-like reflexes. That's you would never, ever, in a thousand years, tell somebody, fundamentally, jump in on your opponent, with your hand down by your knee, with your face first, and right when they get ready to swing, bring your arm under their arm and hit them in the face. Jeff, that's, that's inhuman. That's, that's athleticism. And that's once he inhuman. lost that, yes, he and got once you the monkey juice beat out his ass several times. Yes. Once you lose a nanosecond of that, once you are no longer superhuman, you are now human. And as a human, the way Roy boxes, that's bad advice. So they're saying 
so let me just say, and you're right about that. They're saying basically Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. can can get a lot of money from this. Maybe Mike Tyson could get as much as $10 million once the pay-per-view revenues come in. And, and Roy could get as much as $3 million. But what fucked me up, Jake Paul and Nate Robinson are scheduled to pick up $600. Nate got knocked out for six hundred dollars. Did you see? <laughs> really? What was that much? Was it for real? That's did hilarious. Did you see Nate get knocked out? I did, and I, I tell you what's so sad about that. I was hurt, man. It was so sad. It's so sad. For one, oh, Nate. Damn. <laughs> Nate is Nate is an incredible athlete, but as is, it's almost the exact same story. As the Mike Tyson story here. Nate was relying on his athleticism. And the fact that he is like, he's my favorite. That's actually, that's my favorite basketball player to watch before New Williams. Until I see New Williams play, that's my favorite. Nate Robinson. Because if you six, if you six foot anything, you supposed to. They said he got 600K. They said it was fake news. Okay, he got about 600 grand. I hope okay. so, man. I hope so. Shit. But here's, e- even then, after you cut all that up, that's only about 150, 175,000 to him. Exactly. Once right. you cut it all up. But at, at any rate, I ain't counting the man's money. Um, somebody should have told him, somebody on his level, at his level, he had access to a Mayweather. He had access to some of the best trainers in the world. I'd have never told him to run in with his head down. What the fuck was that? You're short. Listen, You're short. Man. You can't one. You do have to get in, but so, you can't stay. You can't run in like that. I'm gonna right. time you. So, and don't run in straight. So let's find do this. his left shoulder. Find his. Nobody told him any of that. Right. So let's do this for Nate. Number one, I applaud Nate because a lot of people don't have the courage to get in that ring. Absolutely. You trained, you put in the work, and you got in that motherfucking ring. And whether you were trained properly, that, I mean, that's neither here nor there. And let me just say this, man. A lot of niggas, or men in general, are afraid to see these hands. How about it? Not only were you not afraid to see those hands, you kept rushing in. Fuck it. So that lets me know what kind of heart Nate got. Nate got oh, heart. Brother if you're not skilled and you fighting somebody who's a little bit more skilled than you, but you throwing all motherfucking shit to the wind and you just finna go in there, I'm going to give you one thou wow on the heart of meter Because it's a lot of sissified, pussy-ass motherfuckers who would rather run to their car and pop their trunk then knuckle up with a motherfucker. So let me just say, I acknowledge your manhood and your bravery for being able to get in the ring. Most niggas can't even get into the ring of their own life. Right? The opponent opponent could be your, your motherfucking undefined purpose. You hate to fight that motherfucker because you know you're gonna get your ass beat by your undefined purpose, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. I know you want to jump in, right? Oh my God, it's killing me because I'm looking here in the uh, chat. Don't, and, uh, don't do it, Jeff. <laughs> there's a brother that doubled down and said, yes, I'd rather grab my strap. I'm gonna tell you exactly. I'm gonna read your past, young man. And I'm going to read your future. Let me read your past first. Uh, hey, Jeff, you, you know obviously, this nigga? <laughs> you, obviously, <laughs> you obviously were raised by somebody under 50 years old right now. Obviously. Uh, or not by any males. Your male influence of cats that are at least 50 right now has been very lean because no man 
no man raised with the man code and the understanding of fatality the understanding that I'm about to put my life and my line and my people in jeopardy by spilling the blood of some people or a person that some other people love over this thing nobody talked to you that way nobody explained to you that you about to get uh a mother's son is about to leave this earth over a scuff on your shoe. A child's father is about to leave this earth. You are about to risk your freedom. You are about to start a feud between two groups of black people that white folks gonna make money on full circle over blank. That is why you would prefer to get your strap. Because you never had you never had anybody to uh, to to make you understand what mortality means and what it means to be mortal with your hands or mortal with your mind. But it's easy to be mortal with your mind if your mind is small. It's hard to be mortal with your mind when it grows. Rent number, number one. one. <laughs> Yes. So again, we appreciate you, Nate. Uh, thank you for getting in there. Thank you for doing your thing. Um, it was good to see Mike. Uh, Mike is in great shape. Lost a hundred pounds. Uh, fucking shit. If 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 motherfucking Roy Jones was in shape, I don't I, shit. I I don't know what it. Roy didn't look good to me. He didn't look in shape. But I don't know what eight weeks of boxing training will make your body look like. Uh, I do, but, but uh, it, it, you know, Roy, it it just looked like Roy was gassed. It looks like it looked like he was spent for the most part. Well, he was gonna be, bruh. But shit, he, Mike hadn't fought in fifteen years. Mike's a vegan. Here we go. Okay, watch Game Changers on Netflix. It's this movie that uh, me by myself, I uh held all these people uh, uh, at gunpoint and made them lie about their success as athletes now that they have become vegan. No, I didn't, psych. It's this fantastic movie and Mike cites it and Mike cites being a vegan for having more energy. Here's That's another a rant. Oh, I'm done. Go see it. No, I'm saying about your personal beliefs. Let me talk to you about your beliefs, Jeff. That's Jeff, a you're fact. an evangelist. Oh. This nigga's a, a, a vegan evangelist. In the huh. name of the Holy Spirit celery, this okay. is you. Okay, okay, hold on. Now, we saying, we didn't say it. We didn't say it. <laughs> Mike pump the brakes on do do okay yes let's 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 yes or no this for me just humor me for a second we agree that Mike pumped the brakes on Roy correct yes we agree that Mike was in much better shape than Roy correct yes we agree that Mike was in much better shape mentally for this than Roy, because he showed up in better shape than Roy. Can we agree to that? Right. Mike smoked a joint before he got in the ring, did he not? Yes, he did. There's the story. Mike Tyson says he smoked marijuana before fight versus Roy Jones Jr. It's just who I am, according to USA Today, story written by Josh okay. Peter. Go ahead. Now, Mike, Mike accredits his energy to leaving meat alone, does he not? He does, Jeff. So I'm just saying every time say, I'm just saying can, every time you How can we not say that that has no bearing here? I didn't say it didn't have any bearing, but every time any vegan related shit pop up, you start looking like Jim Baker. <laughs> like you and Tammy Faye, y'all get out there and y'all start testifying. See the sacred leaf. <laughs> you know, 
cabbage, and yeah, man. quinoa. Yeah, man. The holy quinoa. Like, yeah. come on. Uh, God uh, damn. Let me, let me kill all this, too. Uh, I see a vegetarian who smokes GMO weed. Uh, I, I submit that GMO vegetarians and GMO weed smokers are healthier than GMO meat eaters and GMO cigarette smokers. Debate. Guess what? All you healthy and unhealthy <laughs> niggas is about to die. How about okay. that? Well, with that, does the veganism right the protect you from COVID? Say again. Does the veganism protect you from COVID? COVID? What's COVID? You know, fucking without a rubber. Oh no, 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 no. Mm -mm. That's hopefully, hopefully, it will uh, elevate your your uh, frequency so that you don't vibrate on that lower level. Does veganism protect you? From COVID, uh, absolutely. Nigga, you had COVID three times I, uh, since twice. the shit been out. And, you and, had the and, experimental uh, okay. COVID. Okay, and and is it? <laughs> would this be hard to argue? Um, if I stood up and said, "Hey, you guys, I've had uh, COVID twice, and uh, here's my blood work. I've done the following, and it's worked for me." Whatever I had to say. Wouldn't that be a bit more uh, useful now than people who could tell you they've never had it? Because there's a thousand ways to, to, there's a million reasons to never have it. There's not so many. You just got through proselytizing about what you need to do to stay healthy. You just, nigga, total package, vitamin C, pea protein, these things you just got through saying. I'm, Jeff, I'm going to ask you again. <laughs> Nigga, why you got veggie tails up? Why? Cause that's what you want on the veggie tail side of the game, bruh, bruh. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I don't argue. I don't. I don't argue with adults who can read. I don't. It, it, uh, I can no, tell you let, where to go read it, and then go I, read what you read. Let me just say this. I'm I just saying, Jeff. I'm just I antagonize saying. antagonize Jeff. Jeff is right. Okay. Yes, you should eat better. Yes, eating better, you know, contributes to longevity, right? A longer life, a life with a higher quality of life. Right. All of this stuff. So I agree with you, Jeff. I'm just saying the shit don't make you immortal. And a no. lot of motherfuckers who proselytize, huh? Motherfucking. <laughs> Motherfucking Jehovah Witness for vegetables knocking on niggas' doors, telling niggas they eat you wrong. Y'all niggas is dying too, you know. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I don't think. Look, you can eat what you want. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just stating facts. What makes sense? Okay. If I agree Roy, with you, Jeff. Mike, I'm trying to get like okay, you. Can we argue this? If Mike did exactly what Roy did, would that fight would have been worth it if they did the same training? If Mike didn't train like Mike, Mike trained like Roy. Mike ate like Roy. Are we watching the same fight? No. no. Exactly. No, I so, agree with you, Jeff. I already said I agree with you. I'm just antagonizing. You're not invincible, though. Oh no. Uh, uh. Hey Jeff. What? It's gonna take you longer to get in the ground than me. I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be cremated. It's gonna take you longer to get reduced to ashes. <laughs> but you gonna be in ash form, nigga. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll take you right now. Oh yeah. I'm not going in the ground. If I have anything to do with it, I'm, I'm ashes. All right, so we, 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 we killed that conversation. Let's move on to the next. Here we go. Fuck. Because people been hitting me up all day about this shit. Oh, yes. We only got one sale. Can I get another sale? 
we trying to push right now. I need everybody to hit the like button. We got 1,100 people in the in the chat room right now. Everybody hit the like button and the share button. Oh, more cash app information. Also, yes, I'm gonna give Jeff Brown's Cash App information right now, Jeffrey. There it is, yes. right there. Dollar sign GB Funny Style. Please support Jeff Brown. He's one of the most solid people that I know personally. Oh wow, dude, who did your graphics? That's hey, dope. Mind your business. Don't be asking about my little secret weapons and shit. <laughs> the fuck? Find your own secret weapons, Jeff. No, anyway. Find your own <laughs> weapons in the field. Anyway, dollar sign, GB Funny Style. Everybody that's in the chat room right now, drop a five spot on Big Brother Uncle Jeff in the building. Also, because Sarah was here on time after getting off work at 4 a.m., struggling with her sleep, still was able to get here at 10.05. Man, please support Sarah, dollar sign, Sundays with Sarah. Please support her big time. Please, please, please hit her, her cash app. Show her some love. Show her some support. Also, my cash app is dollar sign Zo What Netter. Come on, guys. Hit that cash app. Show your love. Show your appreciation. And if you can't, we understand. We know it's difficult times and tough times ahead. Uh, California has been shut down. Uh, uh, Southern California, for sure, has been shut down three weeks starting today until December 21st. So trust me, businesses are going to struggle. We know people are struggling out there. But those relationship problems are going to quadruple if you don't have any resources and you stuck in the house with somebody for three weeks. ZoeWhatMasterclass.com. Please, please, please get to ZoeWhatMasterclass.com and show your love. You're going to get 50% off because it's Cyber Monday. Now, let's jump back to it. Jeff? Yes. Here we go. Shit about to get crazy to the motherfucker. We already covered that. Hold on. Sorry. I had the story up. Shit. God damn it. Okay. I want to pull this up. I think we had a picture of it. The girl who was in the restaurant twerking. Oh, yeah. And then the brother came over and basically reprimanded them and was like, what the fuck is y'all doing? Do you have a video clip of that? You don't have to play the audio, but can you pull that up so we can see it? Y'all heard about that shit? The girl twerking? Black restaurant owner goes off on a group of black women for twerking in his restaurant. Mm. Let me ask you a question, bro, Jeff. Yes, sir. You're a father of a daughter, as am I. Sure. Do you know the traditional role that we hold in their life? The uh, world is going to beat her up about it. I, She's going to have if, to reconcile like the type of daddy she got and the world she wants to live in. Sure. What, what do you think, Jeff? What do you think about that? What do you think? Okay, cool. What do you think about that? Which which part the the from like, a, how are from you a, going to I'm gonna ask you this question then we're gonna go to the audio and then you can answer it sure how are you going to mentor her she's in a new world she's dealing with a new the world is new in terms of how they see how women should 
behave and act. Oh, oh, okay. So you're saying And then me, in relation to how she was raised by you and, yes. and the boundaries you've established. Right. Not one of my, not my daughter being one of the ladies in the video. But right. Me sitting next to my daughter watching the video. No. Like for instance, say your daughter is friends with that group. Okay. And members of that group who may not have had the the nurturing that your daughter had by being able to be with you, maybe they lack that. And maybe they think this right. is cute. Maybe they, and this is not about judgment. This is not about disparagement, but your daughter is going to have to navigate through life. And there's going to be moments where her friends are going to be out here doing wild shit, whether it be in Miami, you know, uh, right. you know, on the beach and sure. Like for instance, can you see your, I'm not saying we, we raising some prudes or some shit, but can you see your daughter? I know I can't see mine. God damn. <laughs> Motherfucking at a concert on the edge. Cause I done seen Jamie Foxx do this. At the edge of the stage with her mouth wide open yeah. while a nigga pouring some motherfucking liquor in her mouth. All in the name of fun. Now, before before you answer, Jeff, let's listen to the audio. And then when we come back, we're going right to Jeff Brown. Sure. I invested a lot of money into buying this building and to developing this concept so black people can have somewhere nice to go to, okay? Somewhere where we can feel good about ourselves as a... Come on! Stop the music, please! Somewhere where our people can feel good about ourselves as a culture, okay? Yes. No, no, real talk. And so all this twerking and shit, take it to prime, take it to pink, don't bring it here because we're a restaurant. And so beyond that, 75% of my customers are ladies. And I'm on men to show respect for themselves for how they carry themselves here. So how can I tell the men to respect themselves? And you guys are twerking on glass here. If you want to do it, get the fuck out of my restaurant. Because I did it for our people and I did it for our culture. So don't do it, no, don't do it again. I don't want to hear it. If you don't like it, get out because I don't need your money. I need to provide something for my people. And don't do it again. Thank you. Why'd you stop it? That was it. Oh, I thought we was going to get to hear these heifers try to retort. Because no. uh, in my opinion, the only reason that this is a big deal is because of how emasculated the black man has become. You're not looking at anything different. My Uncle Larry, my Uncle Bobby, my grandfather, my Uncle Tony, my Uncle Harry, my Uncle Dutch, my Uncle Pep, my Uncle Michelle, my Uncle Ernie, my Uncle Kevin. I think you met my Uncle Kevin. Uncle Michelle? Uncle Michelle, and you didn't want none. I you did say, not did want this nigga cross over? Was he Uncle that Michael at first? That nigga was a first? grandmaster with the elbows, okay. yo. Okay. Shit. okay. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is I can't never, pff, my Uncle John, I ain't even got over on the other side. Anyway, my Uncle Chuck, my Uncle Snooky, nigga, my Uncle Stan, my Uncle Iris, none of them niggas. Hey, I got an Uncle Stan. Bruh, ain't Uncle none Stan, of them niggas. Hey, Uncle Stan was in the Navy 30 years. Right? <laughs> okay, now, the the Uncle Stan, did your Uncle Stan have any issues with speaking his mind? Oh, no. Uncle oh, Stan no, son. put hands on you, boy. And to put them things on you. <laughs> because Uncle Stan was a goddamn grown-ass man. Yeah. What you just saw was a stand-up goddamn grown-ass man not by his tongue. And that has caused a rift because we have fallen so far as a people. You don't know how far we've fallen? Look at the difference between what happened after George Floyd as to what happened after Rodney King. One man died. The other one just got a real good ass whooping. Right. Right. That's where we used to be. Right. This brother just stood up and spoke as a man and as a man should. And if you raise your daughter as a man should. Right. I say this. My daughter can grow up 
to be an easy, sleazy, panties down, straight up hoe. She can be the doorknob of Pasadena, giving every nigga a turn. But she can't do that and say, it was because my father was not around. Mm. It was because my father didn't give me the game. Mm. It is because uh, my father did not treat me with absolute love and respect and honor and absolutely never disrespected me from birth to this moment. She can't say none of that. that those would be her wide open against my programming choices. I don't program into my upbringing the kind of sister that would show her ass in public. Well, let me just say this. Um, the development of decorum, integrity, and class is not an attack on your personal freedom. Thank you. Right? Uh, again, we live in a society where Dillagath has taken, right, tact. Tact is not an attack on, you know, your personal freedoms. But we live in a society where Dillagath has become the predominant dogma. When I say Dillagath, of course, Dillagath is an acronym. I think my homeboy came up with it because I remember in the, in, the, in the early 90s, he was handing out T-shirts back in Pasadena that said Dillagath on it. And the acronym stands for, does it look like I give a fuck? Mm. And we're very dogmatic about that, does it look like I give a fuck persona? And that's affixed to our ego. That's affixed to our unhealed trauma. That's affixed to the false personality we project out into the world so people can think we, we, we got money, we, we got all of this shit. But the reality of it is, man, you ain't got no home training. Remember home training? Mm -hmm. Remember that mattered, right? To a culture, to a society. Now, all things lecherous, all things debaucherous, <laughs> right? All types of fuckery gets put under the umbrella of personal freedom, right? You're, you're infringing upon my personal freedom or my personal expression. And it's like, no, I'm not. This is a goddamn restaurant. This is not the clap ass factory. At what point do you decide to bend your ass over near the motherfucking my dinner table? Nigga, near my muffins? Talk to me, Jeff. Nigga, muffins got brown flecks in them anyway. I don't, um, I, I'm going to have to say, bro, that I'm, I'm kind of tired of hearing from people who feel like you need to have the truth dressed up and brought to you with violins playing when you fuck up publicly. I think the truth should be brought to you on the level you bring the bullshit. If you ask me, was it appropriate to get up and twerk in a family restaurant? I would tell you no. I would tell you in my opinion, no. If I was there with my family, I would feel mildly offended by it. And I would expect more of you. But if you got up and did it in front of me, you want me to, to, to have the exact same reaction? I should spare your feelings? Yeah. Fuck you and your feelings. It's, and, but it's a sense of entitlement too, Jeff. They feel mm -hmm. like I can do this. Let me, uh, Jeff, you've been to my cigar lounge, right? Yes, sir. Nigga, I was just at the cigar lounge last week. It's dope, it's like everybody's man cake. Right? I was at the motherfucking cigar lounge last week. I walk in, my homeboy, who is a college recruiter for football players, had some goofy chick with him. And she's supposed to be a rapper. And my homeboy was like, yo, 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 you need to holler at Zoe. You know what I'm saying? Cause Zoe is in the music industry. Zoe know what it's supposed to sound like, blah, 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 blah. Nigga. 
She was like, oh, word, let, he should put this on. Put it on right now. They put it on. Nigga, I listened to 32 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> not 30, not 35. And the shit was trash. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my natural inclination is to empower. So I started by pointing out some positive shit. I said, look, you got a unique voice. And I wasn't lying. I was telling the truth. Like, you have a unique voice. I said, however, your sound, right? Sounds it's like trash. The, I was like, no. I was talking about the sound, the style of, you know, what she sound, what she was doing. I said, that sounds like some Bay Area stuff. I said, I wouldn't be surprised if I heard too short or E40 jump on and do a verse too, uh, because that's the style of the music. She was like, well, that ain't the only style I do. I said, okay, that's fine. That's, that's cool. And then I said, but here's my critique. I said, lyrically, you're not very interesting. I said, you have to push the envelope to be different, to be special. I said, what you're saying is no different than what everybody else is saying, and you're not saying it in a spectacular, kind of riveting way. However, I do believe if you continue to work, you have the voice to be heard. You have the voice. Then she was like, well, who do you know, and who can you hook me up with? And I said, what? You're not at the stage of being hooked up with anybody. <laughs> and then I started to give her examples, you know, of different artists that I've worked with. I started to give her examples of song structure. I started giving her examples of, you know, how she can like push her pen. I was talking about how, you know, Nicki Minaj, she had to push the fucking pen, right? This motherfucker turned around and said, listen to this, Jeff. Motherfucker turned around and said, all right, I'm tired of listening to you. I don't want to hear anything else you got to say. Oh. I said, you think you're entitled to my greatness. But you're not, you're not entitled to my information. I don't owe you this help. Now I'm going to tell you how I really feel. You're 38. You got a kid that's <laughs> your kid gonna make money before your rap career. Nigga, I you okay, was you run around here with a blonde wig on. You know what I mean? Now I'm gonna tell you the motherfucking truth without trying to build you up so you can find some. I'm gonna tell you what you really sound like. Oh, I said you you think at 38 you should be rapping while your kid is in college so niggas can make fun of him. See, it's a mentality out here that says, you supposed to give me something. I'm not supposed to give you shit. What have you earned? First off, you don't earn nothing outwardly until you overcome inwardly. You can tell you ain't overcame nothing internally. You might have been wounded and got past the initial event but what have you healed? What have you reconciled from within? You ain't did none of that work out here trying to be on motherfucking social media at damn near 40 years old with a kid that, that's probably got some promise that's going to go somewhere. And then when you get put in front of somebody that can give you some real juice and you, and, and the crazy thing was she was saying, nah, that makes sense. And yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, I learned something, but I'm tired of listening to you. How are you at 40 tired of listening to somebody that's giving you something that you claim to be beneficial, but you can only take so much of it? That means you're not ready for the truth. That means you're not ready for, for somebody to come in and really guide you to a higher level of existence. You just want the end result. You want the microwave success. Let me drop a single and blow up. Ooh. Ooh, Gouda. 
Chalupa. And listen, same kind of shit that these women feel like, oh, I'm independent. I can clap my ass in this motherfucking establishment. Fuck that. We giving him our money. So the ass clapping that goes on comes with our patronage. You don't knock it. The fuck? <laughs> Jeff Brown. Off. Um. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, I was jump I was jumping up and down. I am so proud of myself for my self-restraint during good. you talk about this horrible trash broad, especially when you got to 38. No, that's I was so sure he was talking about a 19-year-old that was going to try to bring up the generation gap and how I'm more inspired by young insert whatever rapper here. I thought that is was gonna be your uphill. No. Instead, you dealing with uh, a goddamn social embryo. Just to never make it to, yeah, need to rename her fetus cause she ain't ready to be out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Rename her fetus because she ain't ready to be out out yet. (laughs) That's genius. Uh, That's genius. (laughs) Bruh, here goes some more. Oh, shit. Here goes some more genius. I had to, uh, on a a show (laughs) that shall remain nameless that I guest hosted on with, with with a group of ladies, uh, they had a, a musical guest on. And this dude really had promise. But not unlike, but he wasn't 38. Fuck a duck. He was a young dude. And I had to tell him, hey man, nobody wants to hear another Jay-Z or another whoever. You need to be the first you and write about that shit that you really don't want to write about. Write about how you got your fucking heart. Who broke your fucking heart? And I'm not talking about what girl. Was it your father or your mother or both of them? Mm. Mm. Somebody want to hear that. Don't nobody, bruh, ain't nobody buying the bar out no more. Nobody, you, but your problem is, and what the problem is with a lot of people is like how she just hurdled your advice and went into who can you hook me up with. Uh, First off, you were supposed to bring me a cake. Your boy, now your boy suspect. Whoever brought her to you kind of suspect. If he liked that shit, then he suspect. Uh, um, If he can't see that she ain't ready, his advice is watery. Um, She brought you, instead of a cake, she showed up with eggs, flour, sugar, salt, bacon powder. Uh uh-uh. uh. I want a cake. I'm trying to tell you that you need to uh, turn up the fire. You need to start, since you're a little older, you're going to need an extra egg in here. I'm telling you what you need for your ingredients because I know what I know what I'm talking about. You were brought here under the belief that I I knew what I was talking about. While you were in the car, I was a genius because I was going to tell you, I was going to take you in your mind, you was going to spit 30 seconds of this, and we was going to rush in the car and go over and on the phone, I'm talking to Quincy Jones and Pharrell about you because I'm a genius if I do that. But because I don't do that, now you going to question my resume, nigga? Because I'm not in line with your dream, I Man. must be inaccurate. Man, it, it turned into so who who did you help and who did right you... now you running your shit, nigga? You came to me. <laughs> ah, I'm like, girl, you can't even rap a saran uh, sandwich in saran wrap, let alone a rap record. Now I'm gonna say this, bro, to hit back one of the things you said. 
Here's where I firmly disagree about uh, rap being a young man's game. Trendy, right now, bubblegum ass, programmed, purposely intentional uh, mind candy rap is a young man's game. Rock and roll is a young man's game, but the Rolling Stones are on tour because they haven't been taught that their art is disposable. You have. How you gonna throw somebody out of an art form built on something to say right when they get to the age to really have something to say? I, Jeff, I totally agree with you, and I don't think that that's necessarily the point that I'm trying to make. I think the point I'm making is the same point a lot of people have been making with regards to Nate Robinson. Yes, you're an incredible athlete, but you don't wake up one day and train for a year and become an incredible boxer in a sport you've never been in. Oh, no. And all I'm saying is, it, yes, at 38, you wake up one day and you want to be a rapper. Right? And then if you're fortunate enough to listen to somebody who knows how to do it, both in front of the mic and behind the boards, right? Mm -hmm. Who who has, you understand what I'm saying? Who has put artists in particular positions to succeed, why wouldn't you listen to someone who has been where you have not? Absolutely. So again, I'm saying at 38, you can't just jump into hip hop. Even the mumble shit requires some level of skill. I'm just saying, like, you can't just jump in and motherfucker trying to help you and then you want to talk some shit. Well, guess what? Fuck! Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right on, bro. You're right on. Now, so, I, I will, uh, I will pose this to you. Mm. Let's say we could possibly keep all his metaphysical contributions and attributes in hip hop, but take him out, rock him. And we have rock him say, fuck it. I'm gonna start next week. Here's my thing. How do you feel? Uh, here's my thing about rock him. Um, love him to death. Consider him my number one MC. Uh, okay, I thought this was about to go left. But he, here's my problem, right? Here's my problem with the God MC. Hmm. He, he was better to me when I didn't know what the fuck he was saying. Like his, his mystery, mm -hmm. right? His mysterious nature and mm -hmm. what he was talking about, right? When you, when you listen to Follow the Leader, Right. Right. You know, and he's talking about the universe and you're you're in the universe and you see the planet Earth disappear into a ball of clay. And, you know, he was he was, you know, that shit was amazing. But as I started to understand what he was talking about, I started to understand the doctrine of the five percent nation. I started to understand the information. He started to lose a little bit to me. Mm. He started to lose a little bit to me, right? Because it didn't seem as universal as I believed it to have been. Mm. It's it started to sound a little niche, a little nicheish, especially okay. as he got older. As he got older, it just you know he started to lose a little bit for me. But I love Rakim, and, and again, Rakim is my number one MC. Okay, well. I guess my point is, what if there's a dude that right now is 51 and is fucking incredible as a lyricist and is valid and is deep like some of these homeless dudes you see? Yeah, it doesn't matter. He He's dope. He's just and dope. I, I think that dude, I think that dude, just like a folk singer, should have a hip hop career. I think he should have a following. 100%. I think people should buy like, his music. I think, but we have been taught 
that once you get some sense mm -hmm. in hip hop, we don't want to hear from you. Right, you're old. I get it. KRS One, not as lyrically uh, intricate as Rakim. That's my number two. However, to me, KRS, as is evidenced by the longevity of his career, is more universal in what he shares. Absolutely. You know, just Absolutely. more universal. Like Absolutely. And I, I, I love KRS, but KRS is probably one of the simplest MCs I you you know you would ever encounter. He was yeah. a simple, but he was simple in a different way. He was he, simple he, in an intellectual way. Like yeah. he he mixed the depth and the deepness of spiritual and conscious shit with simple lyrics. Yes. This he was the would, some of the shit he said was as simple as run DMC and no motherfuckers was the cartoon coloring book. Oh yeah. Simplicity was, uh, MCs, right? They was the four crayons of rap. Right. They this was the would four. say kuwa kuwa k a wa a wa right. r a wa a wa s my rhymes are fresh. You you don't get no simpler than that. He was, I, I like to say that KRS is the master of bite-sized metaphysics. No, put, no doubt. I agree. He, he put that metaphys he put that metaphysics in nuggets that I don't if you understand English, you can get it. And that's well, listen. Listen to the simplicity, but the complexness. I think, I think his most genius track is "Hold." Have you ever heard "Hold"? Yeah. Dude, this dude rhymes one word and makes it mean thirty meanings but over three I'm, minutes. That's what I'm that's saying. That's genius. To me, that's his genius. That's his genius, and to me, he's one of the greatest MCs of all times. No uh, question. Let me stop. No question. Let, let me stop real quick. We we had damn near fourteen hundred. We only got five hundred and fifty five likes. Everybody hit the like button. Please do us that solid. I think it's don't don't just sit in here and not and and, and let me just say this. Somebody hit me to this. Some people are watching this show, Jeff, on their on their smart TVs. Really? So they can't hit the like button. Oh wow! So I so I understand and I appreciate that little bit of context. Well, but if you have access to the like button, don't just sit there and act like you know we don't need that. We need these shows to trend. This is a healthy amount of people in here right now. Somebody said yes, you can. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a healthy amount of people in here right now. Please hit the like button. All right, can y'all do that for me? And also, don't forget to support. The So What Masterclass. We've only got one sale in 77 minutes. We need you guys to really get in here and cash mob us on a real way. We need the funds to continue working on my documentary, but I'm telling you this is a, a true investment in self. Go to ZoWhatMasterclass.com. We have a sale that will end tonight. Cyber Monday sale that ends tonight at 11.55 p.m. So go do that right now. I want to shout some people out. So let's get back, Jeff. Uh, so sir, back to what we were saying. If I, if I may, before right before we get back to what we were saying, with regard to the likes, uh, I'm going to reverse agree with you again. Uh, those of you who have smart TVs, if you're watching us on a smart TV and you can't like us, could you please explain how your life got so fucking upside down that you have a smart TV and you don't have a smart phone? How is it that you have an extremely expensive television but no communicable device in your hand that you could go to and press the like on the phone? I, if you, well, somebody if just said, position, they, somebody said, hey, Zoe, I'm watching y'all. Like. From my 60 inch 4K smart TV, but I still hit the like button from my phone. A, a motherfucker right. reached out to me now. Somebody reached out to me <laughs> in my in, in, on Instagram Thank and said you. that. I'm just saying, man. Thank you. 
I'm watching on the TV. So now let's shift gears. Okay. Let's shift gears. Now that we've gotten the major distractions out the way, ass clapping at a black establishment restaurant. We got that out the way. Ass clapping at the black establishment. Right. Ass clapping at the black establishment. Now that we got that bullshit out the way, right? We got the little right. hip hop piece talking about music and motherfuckers taking advice from older heads or whatever. Oh, before I move on, Quincy Jones, back on the block album. Yeah. Won a Grammy, amazing album. Co a super collection of all types of motherfuckers, stars from everywhere. Said something very, very powerful. He said, hip hop was now. Hip hop was now, and this is in 92. Hip hop is now. What, he, what the jazz artist and cats like him did back in the day that was the past. You know, the Ella Fitzgeralds and Sarah Vaughns and, and Miles Davises and all of these different people, that was back in the day. He said, but that doesn't make us, you know, you know, worthless, right? He said, the Back on the Block album was to bridge the past, the present, and the future all together. You know who was the future for Quincy? Back in the back in '92, it was mm. Tevin Campbell, because of his voice, because of his talent, right? So he was saying, "Let me bring hip hop, because you don't shun hip hop." That was one of no. the reasons him and Michael Jackson fell out, because Michael felt like in '87, hip hop was a flash in the pan. Then later on in his career, he got Biggie and Fifty and all these guys rapping with him, but he felt. Nah, man, that ain't gonna be around for long. And Quincy was ahead of the curve and said, nigga, you better get down with this shit. That was one of the reasons they fell out. Hmm. So by 92, when Quincy is putting his Back on the Block album together, he's, stre he's stringing all of these generations together because the, the masters such as himself, Miles, Herbie Hancock, you know, George Benson, all these legends, he got everybody to feed into hip hop and then to feed into the next. Listen, man, that's how it's supposed to work, man. It's supposed to be a continuum, right? And that's why that album was successful. I just wanted to throw that last little piece in. That's how we should work, you know. A lot of times we disaggregate. The young niggas don't want to listen to the older niggas. The older niggas don't want to listen to the younger niggas. We got to all come together and share our experiences, right? That's, that's the best way to do it. Let me jump right into this shit. As we reported earlier, California is about to get shut down, or it is shut down starting today. We've been on a curfew since last week. The curfew last week basically said, have your ass home by 10 o'clock, nigga. Not 9.30, 10 o'clock, nigga. Have your ass home, right? Get off the street, curfew, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. You, you can tell time, can't you, you nigga? You can tell time, nigga. Bring me a paperback, too. <laughs> now, after that, the cases keep going up in California, I guess. Put up the stats again. Right? One out of one, uh, out of every 145 people infected. U.S., 110,000 new cases. 5,087 new cases yesterday. I don't know whenever this pick was taken. New cases on track to quadruple by Christmas. So they said, let's shut it down, right? Let's shut down from today, the 30th, until the 21st, three weeks, right? Now, the reason why I want to bring some of this stuff up is because it's a lot of different disinformation floating around. And I want Jeff to talk to me about it because I want to be clear. Could you put up that picture of 
it's got it's somebody circled it. They circled the message around it because I want to start this conversation right here. They, they it's like red a red circle around. Like somebody there's a a picture of a post and somebody wrote something around it. It's a circle. Yeah, I thought I saw that. Did you see that, Jeff? Yeah. I saw a red circle. I remember seeing a red circle around. Here, let me pull the shit up because I got the goddamn pictures now. Shit. Come on, Sarah. I'm trying to find it. In the name of Hoda the Boga Shah. Oh, in the meantime, let me shout this person out. Uh, Darren's. Darren's Jerry, he purchased a master class. Do you have All it? All right, not? brother. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Master class, 1,400 people in here right now. We love it. Let's get to 1,000 likes. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. We appreciate everybody for being in oh, here. Know that you know what I'm talking about. There you go. Right? Don't forget, get over there to Zo What master class. There it is right there. Jeff, read this. Pfizer's new COVID vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine, present, prevents 90% of infections. Now, somebody down at the bottom, look at that. It says 40 years worth of research, no vaccine for HIV. No vaccine for cancer. Ongoing research, no vaccine for the common cold. Less than a year for a COVID vaccine. See, whenever you see motherfuckers rushing, have you ever seen a nigga stealing in a, in a department store? The good thieves are cool to the motherfucker, right, Jeff? They calm. Oh, they look like they got $10,000 to spend, but they got actually ten thousand dollars on them in merchandise. Right. <laughs> you could tell the novice thief, cause the nigga is sweating. He got that that glaze of sweat. It ain't beads. Looking, it's like a looking sheen. at the ca looking into the security cameras. Looking at the security guards. Got a weird walk. There ain't no smoothness to them. Ain't no calm. And they're those motherfuckers that get caught. Right. This is how I feel this rollout for the vaccine is. These motherfuckers is pushing an agenda. What is the agenda, Jeff? You ain't oh. cured shit with vaccines. Maybe polio. But some shit that fuck with us on a regular HIV, that's a virus. When when did COVID take precedent over HIV? Go, Jeff. Um, I would say somewhere around uh the early nineteen hundreds when uh Nelson Rockefeller uh took over the medical industry and made petroleum-based uh, medicines. Once he figured out that they could be made, mm -hmm. he made everything herbal on the outskirts. That's when it, that's, people often wonder when it got pushed to the outside, but that was done by Nelson Rockefeller way back. Hmm. So this concept that this virus is, uh, this vaccine has only been studied for a year. Um, I believe the the vaccine is the two of a one-two punch, and I believe that both of those punches have been being worked on for quite some time. I don't I don't think for a minute that what you about to get hit with has been only rushed through for a year. I don't. Right. And if and if it is, if it is the very rushing, the very rushing of it by coincidence is not. We are going to push this in such a way that our scientists are forced to rush so that mistakes will be made on purpose because we are trying to rid the earth of two thirds of its population, not white people, not black people, 
two thirds of the earth's eaters, but people why? who but why? do nothing but consume. We don't need that many. We got too many carp in the pool. That's what I think. So you think this is all population control? Absolutely. Yeah. I think it is. Uh, uh, I think. I don't think any good can come of this. I don't think. I think either. The Crippen virus is elegant, is what we finna be looking at. The what? The Crippen virus is elegant. <clears throat> I am legend, nigga. Uh, wow. Okay. Wow. We either looking at some shit like that, or we looking at 1984, or we looking at the Handmaid's Tale, mm. or nature beats us all, and uh. That ice caps melt and shit makes 2022 the last regular year. <laughs> okay, either way, That's this funny. is what I think you're looking at, and nobody wants to look at it. Everybody wants to look backwards because the rearview mirror feels so much better. But uh, uh-uh. I don't trust this fucking vaccine worth the fuck, and I'm not taking it. And again, we get manipulated, right? We get manipulated in so many different ways. It's really about keeping you off balance by giving you too many choices, by giving you too many voices, right? By giving you a little, you sprinkle the truth over a manufactured fact, right? Over a lie. You sprinkle a little piece and that piece serves as a type of bait that pulls you in because they know you create realities once you start believing in shit. So, right. We have to we have to we have to make sure that we control the information that comes into your consciousness because whatever you start believing in, you start manifesting. So, if you believe you're less than, you manifest less than. If you believe that you're inept, you manifest an inept kind of life, right? So we need to make sure that the quality of information is never uncut dope, right? We have to make sure of that. I don't think reality is anything other than belief construct. Right, but when I come back, right? Mm -hmm. Pfizer, new COVID, right? Mm -hmm. AstraZeneca. They made a mistake, faces difficult questions about their vaccine. Some trial participants only got a partial dose of AstraZeneca's vaccine. Experts said the company's spotty disclosures have eroded confidence. You ain't disclosed all the truth, my nigga. The announcement this week that a cheap, easy to make coronavirus vaccine appeared to be up to 90% effective was greeted with jubilation, right? Here's my thing, man. How is it 90% effective in less than a year? What humans did you test it on? Right? Now, while this is going on, go look up the AstraZeneca story. It's right there. While this is going on, Maybe this is fake news. Dr. Roger Hodgkinson on COVID. This is the biggest hoax ever perpetrated on an unsuspecting public. Why am I showing you two different perspectives? Right? One so-called doctor basically saying Dr. Hodgkinson is the former chairman of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons Committee in Ottawa. He was once CEO of a large private medical laboratory in Edmonton, Alberta, and for the past 20 years has held the position as chairman of a medical biotechnology company based in North Carolina, currently tasked with selling a COVID test. He is a medical specialist in pathology, which includes virology, who trained at Cambridge University 
in the UK. He is perfectly positioned to speak on this topic. Before I get into that, let me hit you with another piece. You're going to think it's unrelated, but it ain't. Trump's campaign sued for attempting to disenfranchise black voters. The Trump campaign has repeatedly attempted to use the judicial system to overturn president, the president's defeat to President-elect Joe Biden, filling more than two dozen unsuccessful uh, lawsuit since election day. He done lost damn near all of them. Let me, let me, let me, why does this relate? This is the same man who had the platinum plan. Mm -hmm. And now he's trying to disenfranchise black voters. Why is he trying to disenfranchise black voters? Because black voters turned out in big numbers for Biden. Politicians speak double talk. Right? Say one thing, do another. Right? How does that relate to what I'm showing you? One article comes out, talks about, oh, there's a vaccine. Another article comes out, says it's a hoax. Why? Let's keep everybody the fuck confused. Right? Let's keep all narratives out there and flooding people so they don't know what to do, right? We live in a time that's based on confusion, that's based on half-truths, that's designed to keep you off balance so you're never prepared for what needs to happen in your immediate space. But guess what? If you want a job, they're going to hit you with that motherfucking vaccine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guess what? If you want to travel, they're going to hit you with that vaccine. Regardless of your trepidation or your confusion, they're going to hit you with something. Am I right, Jeff? Uh, yeah, bro. You're about to learn. You, the, you're, you're about to, to learn why uh, grow your own food has been so big. That's you're about what Bobby talk about, but go ahead, Jeff, talk about it. You're about to learn why uh, living off the grid is so big. You're about to learn uh, why the white boys who always dress funny and that you made fun of make a lot of sense now. Um, all that. Uh, you're about to learn why the uncle that uh, used to talk that it's the system shit, man, uh, that uncle why maybe he wasn't as uh, uh, stupid as you all making him out to be. You about to figure it out because these people are really about to lower the boom on this whatever the next thing is. I don't know what the next thing is. Go to Jamaica and put her ass on a sink and post it to Instagram. Right, right. I call these people the electric sliders. <laughs> Do you know what the fuck is happening in the world right now? Well, no, let's go take a picture of our food at, at a restaurant and post it on Instagram. Winnie. Winnie. <laughs> I had ceviche. Bitch, that's already raw. Imagine raw COVID. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> we just been, bruh, bruh. And, and... Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I don't think anybody uh, needs this system to stay working more than shallow black people. Oh, no, don't do that. God, shit. Jeff. Nobody God needs it. damn. Don't do Please that. Please, God, keep it going. Keep going, Jeff. Hey, just take Please this God. into your rant. Just go on I into mean, your rant, Jeff. Please, God, this, this, this voting thing has got to work, okay? I am... Uh, an assistant manager at FedEx here in Atlanta and me and my girlfriend who works at the Waffle House live a lifestyle that is not unlike the lifestyle that my uncle Tico lives that is a lawyer in Manhattan please God 
please, I need to keep my 4,000 square foot house with a gazebo that only costs me $1,200 a month. I need to keep it. I, I, I have to be able to keep this facade up. No one needs this worse than black people who have been led to believe that what they can buy equals the greatness of their very skin. We need this shit. That's where this dependence upon voting, this dependence upon the system comes from is we have bought into, okay, well, they must be treating me bad because I haven't learned blank. I didn't do, I didn't go to blank school. I, I don't have blank degree um, I don't understand blank social protocol, and as soon as I do that, as soon as 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 I live here, or as soon as I dress like this and wear this designer, then I'll I'll be it. If that's where you live in, God damn it, this thing has got to work. We got to get Trump out. Oh my God, because I've got to have an have another chance. And it's Trump and his thinking that is keeping me from my chance because it could not possibly be that these people don't give a shit about how hard I work or what it is I work on. Could it be that maybe these people have found a way to ignore that I have not the fact that my right to vote is voted on every 30 years? No, don't worry about any of that. I need this shit to work. And that's who we are dealing with, people. And it is the people who need this shit to work that you're going to have to find a way to leave over there. And God love who's on the tracks when the train comes through. Because it's a train coming. There is a train coming. And this train is going to mash the fuck out of some hopes. It's going to literally mash the fuck out of some human beings. There's going to be a mass mashing. A mass mashing. And if it's if you're on the, the side when the train went by and it just missed you, well, maybe you'll be left over with the rest of us. But if you're over there with the voting and the arranging the, cha the, the deck chairs on the Titanic as this is going down, as I told you, Back at T-Radio V, America is already dead. It's just falling slow. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I said, Miss Rudolph, Miss Rudolph, where did Not the spider go? <laughs> if you don't show up with that turkey, you will see him again. Right? <laughs> right? Nigga? <laughs> I, I can't man I I um I can't I I can't find myself with a uh, sympathy for any of us, bro. We don't we do, nobody gets sympathy tickets for me anymore because there's there's just no room for it. We're, we're we're just we're out of time. Let's do it another way, Jeff. Your incessant desire and need to be stimulated all the time in order for you to feel like your life is meaningful is the reason why the elite feel like you're dispendable. Or you're, you're uh, what's the word? Uh, I, I said it wrong, god damn. If, if, Ex expendable? Expendable, sorry about that, god damn. My motherfucking brain. Okay. Is why the uh, elite feel like you're expendable, right? Mm hmm And the reason why that is, is because they create the motherfucking things for you to do, right? You're trying to mimic their life. You're trying wow. to model their life, right? You don't have what they have, but yet you're trying to duplicate and mimic what they do, right? So how many motherfuckers have saved up for a vacation? Oof but don't have insurance, life insurance. Right. 
which is a wealth builder. How many motherfuckers have saved up for a certain kind of outfit or a certain type of whip, right? Oh, no, no, no. They just say the down for the whip, the down. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? You so busy wanting to do shit that you never got around to being who you really are. So doing, stimulation, moving, oh, if we not doing something, this relationship is dying. All this childish shit that prevents you from doing what you're actually supposed to be doing. What is that? We don't go nowhere. What, what, what should you actually be doing? I, uh, are you asking me? No, uh, I'm asking them. Okay. I'm going to tell you real quick. The Masons have a concept called apotheosis. George Washington, according to them, achieved apotheosis. You see theosis in the word, apotheosis, mm -hmm. right? Theosis is God. That oh, right? They about to God up. They about to God up. They rose him to a god uh, to godhood, apotheosis, right? If you're not achieving godhood in your life, God realization, self realization in your life, right? You're wasting your humanity here. See, entertainment, all that shit is designed to keep you distracted. Wealth, wealth accumulation, materialism, right? You think if you have everything the world has to offer, you have everything, but that's not true. We live in this world so we can be forced to grow and evolve consciously. Now, Jeff, I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but I believe they've been fattening us up from the beginning so that they can call us back in the end. Your thoughts, Jeff? Oh, sure, brother. That's uh that's an easy one. Um they basically have made all these social poisons. What you watch, what you gotta wear. Where you gotta be, where you gotta go, mm -hmm. what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. And now, those of you who have not learned to live without those things, which is most of you, are gonna lose your fucking mind when I turn this faucet off. Ooh, wait. Ooh. wait a minute, we can't go nowhere? What kind of bullshit Think about this for a second, bro. I'm listening. I'm going to take you back to primitive whitey. Primitive whitey. Don't, don't. Don't blonk a duck a blow, blow. Primitive uh, whitey. Out here on the plane by myself now. <laughs> primitive whitey. Yeah, okay, we go. We gonna look that up, brother. I'm gonna be back to this. I'm gonna be back to this with some funky ass beat with a harmonica over it. <laughs> Primitive Whitey. Uh, That's the let's record. go back to him. <laughs> Dude, you out in the bush, nigga, building your house literally from scratch, cutting down trees to build your house. Try to look him in the face talking about we ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. What has happened is your expectation of how comfortable, how easy, how entertaining, how convenient life is supposed to be has been elevated to this imaginary place 
mostly by interest, which is also imaginary, uh, you, you've been elevated to this imaginary place. And here's why it's imaginary. Because in order for you to live this social life in America, do you know how many other people around the world have to suffer for that? Mm. Mm. So I had to suffer for Magic Mountain, nigga. Mm. C- keep going. What else they got to somebody, suffer for? So, keep, keep, keep going. Somebody, somebody got to suffer for your for, microwave. For somebody Disneyland. really got to suffer for that bling. Keep going. You niggas with big diamonds should be ashamed of your fucking self. Well, my diamonds didn't come from Africa. Nigga, how do you know? Do you trust the same people that told you blank? Which lie you want to put in there? Because that's who you trusted about your worthless ass diamonds, by the way. Anyway, um, your that, that light that you flick, that switch you flick on the wall and the light come on, somebody suffer for that. The common conveniences we have here equal suffering, especially our abject, abject shit. When you go, uh, hit me one time, bro, I went to Monterey. I used to go like four times a year. There was a club up there. Uh, uh, okay, here we go. The Hunnets podcast. Depends where you buy them. Uh, uh, bro. I'm listening. Go ahead. Is there blo- is there blood actually on any diamond? How do you know that, bro? Listen to yourself. Anyway, um, I used to go to Monterey a lot, and I was a favorite comic at this club up there. Shout out to Planet Gemini. Uh and it was so cool. Monterey's a huge car town. Oh, I'm taking you for on a ride, but it's gonna be worth the trip. Monterey's a huge car town. And some of v- Jay Leno be up there. Uh, mm-hmm. Big, big, big money on the West Coast is Monterey. It's the number one wedding spot in the world. It is also where the Pebble Beach Concourse Delegates is held. This is where at any moment, if you throw a grenade anywhere, you gonna destroy Ten million dollars worth of cars, and some white man's legacy. It's everywhere. It's every fucking where. But as you look around, you have to ask yourself, where did they get that? They plundered it. There is no American wealth that isn't connected to slavery. Any of it, all of it. If you made your money on this rock, it is connected to the blood and bones of my people, period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ask yourself a question. Is your little Snuggie and watching Mr. Freeze and Heat Miser and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer within the construct of being forced to take a vaccine, does it still have the same meaning? <laughs> if Christmas can be canceled, if Thanksgiving can be canceled, does all of the shit you put like, oh, what does s'mores mean anymore? You remember, let's go in the backyard and 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 have a fire and 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 right. make some s'mores. What does any of that shit matter anymore? Gone. If like like for instance. If you're being forced to do something as a being that's considered to be free, right? Mm-hmm. What's the difference between you and a motherfucking uh, uh, a goddamn guppy in an aquarium Nigga. or a turtle Let's... in an aquarium? You establish the parameters for your little animal, right? So now... Here you are, the animal of this government, the little Yorkie, the little Yorkie nigga of this government. And this government decides that their pet needs a vaccine, even though their pet is conscious and the pet is saying, hey, (laughs) wait a minute. How the fuck you didn't heal nothing else, but this one is 90% effective. You ain't healed shit up. Look at this right here. Look at this article right here, ladies and gentlemen. By by Helen 
Barneswell, November 30th, 2020. This one came out today from my Apple News. Divisions emerge among U.S. officials over when first COVID vaccine, right, doses will be available and for whom? Well, if it ain't ready, okay. It, it ain't it ready. Done? It ain't ready, nigga. Is it finished? Uh, these, these, these collard greens ain't ready for you niggas on the left. What? So listen look, either to either the collard greens is ready or they Right. So l- look at this. Divisions are emerging among top U.S. officials over when the country's first COVID-19 vaccine will be authorized and who should be at the front of the line to get vaccinated. Robert Redfield, the director of the Center for Disease Prevention and Control, and others have suggested vaccination of Americans could begin by the end of next week. In their scenario, the Food and Drug Administration will authorize emergency use of a vaccine developed by Pfizer and Biotech almost immediately after December after a December 10th meeting of an advisory commission which is expected to recommend authorization by the head of the FDA center, uh, but the head of the FDA center responsible for any such authorization said in a presentation to patent groups, these niggas is talking money, patent groups, this business right here, my nigga, uh, last week, that it may take several days or even a few weeks after the advisory committee meeting before his office gives the vaccine a green light. You may have heard in the media that it will be a few days. It's possible that it could be within a few days, but our goal is to make sure it is certainly within a few weeks, said Peter Marks, who heads the FDA Center for Biologics. Let let me just say this. How often do we look at Big Pharma through commercials? And through those fucking commercials, how often do the side effects outweigh the so-called benefits of this new particular drug? And when I say outweigh, I mean outnumber. You get some shit for your toe, your toenails is old and rusty. You need brand new toenails. What are the side effects, Jeff, if you go through the big pharma way? Why can't we hear Jeff? I don't know. I, I, Hold on, Jeff, we can't hear you. Did you mute yourself? I, I muted myself because okay. I had to take a big cough after this big chief run bone pull. All right, because uh, I'm not playing. You know I'm not playing. Wait, Jeff, before uh, you before you answer my question, y'all, please thank you for hitting the like button, getting us to a thousand likes. Please, 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 don't forget to support the Zo What Masterclass. Go to ZoWhatMasterclass.com. I'm pushing that heavy today because it's Cyber Monday. We chopped fifty percent off of the initial price. It's really inexpensive. <laughs> Please, please, please get over there right now. Go to ZoeWhatMasterclass.com. Type in Cyber Monday. Support it, and I will shout you out. Jeff, yes, answer sir. that question. Uh, you're going to have to give me a, uh, the question again. I just took a big pull. What was the question? Oh, my God. Oh, you know I got the answer. But, oh, yes. What happens to you if you have toenails? If you got bad toenails and you take our our pill, I was saying oh, if you go the damn the side effects, big pharma route, yeah, to heal well, side, yourself of any absolutely. malady, yes, of of your toenails. Well, one of the side effects is that your eyeballs uh, will literally melt down the side of your face, out your eye socket. Uh, you will a extreme diarrhea, constant diarrhea. Uh, pain in the upper back 
pain in the middle back, pain in the lower back, gout, apnea, Wait, sleep deprivation, Jeff, you could get loss gout? of smell, you loss can... of taste. Can he hear us? Hoof and mouth. Jeff, you could get yes. gout from uh from Big Pharma? Nigga. Have you heard that list of shit? Okay, now you fucking uh, all up. of it. Let, all I, of it. I, I can you hear me? Some shit now. Yeah, I can hear you, bro. <laughs> okay. All the list of, here's what happens. Here's uh yeah, there you go. No door hit the nail on the head. Your liver you have your two biggest organs for filtering are your liver and your skin. Even more than your lungs, your skin is a filter. Your liver, when you take any of this garbage, works its fucking ass off. And the byproduct of your liver's work is what goes into your bloodstream and affects your organs, bones, in these crazy fucking ways that make these horrible side effects. And all it is, is a fucking massive attack from some crazy genetic angle on your liver. That's the only reason liquor works. A lot of people don't know. Liquor, the only reason liquor works is because it has taxed your liver to the point that it momentarily cannot stop the poison from making it to your bloodstream and that's what a liquor buzz is the more you drink the more you tax your li liver the less it's effective the higher you get that's why it's an intoxicant whereas weed is not mm. this shit everything all the doctor can give me is advice you give me advice I got insurance my insurance is for this. And I don't, I'm trying my best. Creator, energies give this, these words no power. Unless I break a bone, I'm not going in there. I'm not going, if it's not something I can handle out here, that's the only way I'm going in. I'm not taking none of their medicines because they already come out and tell you they're practicing. It's a medical practice. Call me when you get the shit down because y'all just in here taking notes on who you fuck up and how many people die how many people die from infection and from other kind of fucked up shit I'm, mm -mm. I, yeah you, you gone with Big Farmer. I'm going to try to roll with what Dr. Sabi them got to say but Big if, if you're in the aquarium of the society in which you live you're their property are your kids really your kids? Can not the government come in and take your kids forcibly if Today. they wanted to? Today. You think you have some kind of autonomy, some type of freedom, some type of, but you don't. Could not, if you had gold in, 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 a, in a natural disaster, in a natural emergency, did you know FEMA could come in and take your gold? You think you free. You, <clears throat> listen. We said this before, if you get the Black's Law Dictionary and you look up two terms, look up freedom and look up liberty. Thank you. Liberty in the Black's Law Dictionary, third edition, fourth edition, third and fourth edition, either one. Liberty means freedom within the constraints of the law. Liberty. But freedom on the other hand means free. I mean free to do what the fuck you want to do. You're not free here. Never have been. Never will be. You are a Negro Pomeranian. What are those little dogs all the girls love? That's a Yorkie. One of them. 
Listen. Here, nigger, 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 nigger. Sisters voted. <laughs> Keep going, Jeff. Sisters voted. <laughs> Here, nigger, nigger, nigger. Which Sisters one? voted. Oh, oh, sports niggers. I need sports niggers. Yes, watch this. I own a team. Voted I own a team. In, I, I have in the 90 niggers. percentile. Right. For... What kind of niggers do you have? Oh, I have uh, warehouse niggers. Oh, okay. Well, I tell you what. You get your warehouse niggers together, and I'll throw something together where they get to come and watch my sports niggers for cheap. Oh, not free, but cheap. Sister, yes, that's what you are. You, you're in old. the 90 percentile, right? For the Democratic ticket, brothers voted in the 80 percentile in the Demo you know, for the Democratic ticket. Sisters and brother or sisters bought into the narrative that brothers let them down because you had paid slaves, paid uh, Yorkies on camera crying, right? So we bought into a belief. This is why I tell women and men, don't date beliefs, don't date <coughs> narratives. Right, that your ass is not the author of. And when you are the author of a narrative, make sure it's not a narrative that is uh, predicated on escapism, predicated on shirking your accountability for embracing yourself without judgment. That's a whole nother course. That's a whole nother class. But what I'm saying right here, we bought into a narrative that made us enemies because they know us together for each other by each other is a very powerful thing to deal with bro uh look oh but wait whoa, 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 whoa. hold that thought i gotta finish this thought and that is the very motherfucker you voted for is being called to the floor right now because them top cabinet spots is going to motherfuckers who were in the Obama administration. And them motherfuckers was in the Clinton administration. A lot of people are starting to see Biden shit is a replay of Obama. Huh? White people gained $35 trillion in wealth, according to Antonio Moore's research, according to his data, under Obama. So we, get, we about to get a replay. And y'all motherfuckers was, oh, we just got to get this crazy orange man out. Well, you got him out. Now what you getting for it? That's what you get for giving up a motherfucking vote without some kind of guarantee, without some kind of contractual sum. You didn't even enter into a contract. You gave up a wish. And now you getting treated like the Yorkies you are. You don't get your motherfucking ass over in that corner and wait for this dog bone to come that I'm gonna throw. Jeff Brown, your thoughts? Man, look, <clears throat> I had a spectacular thought about 45 seconds ago. That's man, that weed. This man. shit right here That's that weed. did away with it. <laughs> Go ahead, Jeff. No, uh, uh, about being pets, man, about being pets and owned. Um, this is I, I meant to say this a lot earlier either I meant to say this uh, about three minutes ago or three months ago I can't tell because I'm so high time oh has God. no meaning uh, <laughs> here is what we don't understand what, what don't we get brother Let's just imagine a room full of toys. And we are G.I. Joe. Uh, Oprah got a G.I. Joe headquarters with literally everything you've ever seen G.I. Joe on. Everything. All the shit, the entire G.I. Joe catalog. G.I. Joe! G.I. Joe, I got a G.I. Joe catalog. G. She's got the Joe. whole thing, right? <laughs> everything. Jordan, everything. Cosby, everything. And on down to the last little G.I. Joe in the room. 
would be the rest of us motherfuckers running around. What, what we don't get <laughs> is when daddy says, put the toys up, we put the toys up. And if daddy says no more G.I. Joes, then no more G.I. Joes. God damn it. Throw that in. God damn it. <laughs> and what we really don't get is that one day, the master we serve is going to outgrow G.I. Joe just like Toy Story. And when he no longer has a use for you and your G.I. Joes, I strongly suggest you watch the end of Toy Story 3. This nigga is breaking down Toy Story. What the fuck? That's how good this weed is, nigga. <laughs> so I don't fuck with that. Let weed. me tell you something, Joe Williams. Our mutual friend is a juggernaut. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yes, it's you fine. do. Yeah. And shout out to him. High ass niggas. <laughs> Fuck it. This shit is fantastic. So let me just say this. Um fifteen hundred people in the in, in the chat. We so appreciate everybody for being here today. Support black owned businesses, uh, you know, uh for Cyber Monday. I don't know what you guys did, uh, you know, um, for, uh, what is it, Black Friday. But, you know, try to do your best. Now, let me just say this. According to CNN, right, uh, uh, Wednesday, November 25th, please understand this. I, I, I get this intimately because this is going to be a struggle coming up because of this second wave of COVID. According to CNN, uh, Wednesday, November 25th, 2020, another 778,000 Americans filed first-time unemployment claims last week. Right? The recovery in the American job market is still painfully slow. Another 778,000 thousand people filed for first time unemployment benefits last week on a seasonally adjusted basis that was more than the 735,000 initial jobless claims that economists were expecting and it's also higher than last week's revised number of 748,000 it's the second straight week that first time claims rose. This is the first time that jobless claims were up for two consecutive weeks since late July. And the 778,000 figure was the highest level in five weeks. So please understand that shows like this, uh, you know, you know, our show, and other shows have followed suit, right? And I'm not saying we were the first to do it, so let me not say that. But other shows, you know, have kind of, you know, that's the, the, the culture of YouTube. You know, we rely on the Super Chat. We rely on the Cash App. You see the Cash App, people are putting their Cash Apps in their IG Lives, and, and, and we... A, a lot of people are still kind of unaware how many people are actually going through it in a, in a major way. Uh, so whenever you guys share whatever you can share, whatever you guys support, whenever you can support, please understand from myself and my team here that we appreciate whatever you can do. Sarah... We appreciate whatever you can do and whenever you can do it. And when you can't do it, you're still welcomed. You're still appreciated. You're still honored, right? So listen, man, it's about that information. And I just want to say we appreciate you guys for whatever you do. Jeff, I know you wanted to say something there. We uh we wasn't, okay. First, let me double down on what Zoe said about everybody that from encouraging word to like 
to money, to sponsorship, to time, to, to graphics, to whatever you do that makes this show better. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But uh, what was you not saying we wasn't the first to do? The first to do what? Oh, to tell people to hit the cash app or... Oh, hit the, hit the super cash chat. App. Okay, yeah. Hit the super chat or whatever. We're not the first to say that. Right? No. No. Uh, yeah. And Nigga, okay, you never mind. I was a motherfucker. I was about to, to to jump some shit that doesn't exist, so I'm not going to jump at it. <clears throat> Tommy no, Hood, I, Steve you know. H. We appreciate you guys. Uh, somebody else. Uh. Learning every day. Thank you. We appreciate you guys. Uh, a lot of people in the chat room showing their love. We appreciate it. Uh, Ka the artist. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm just telling y'all, man. It, it, we live in a tough time right now, man. And and it ain't gonna get no tougher. I see COVID being here for another maybe two years. I'm That's gonna, it. Yeah. Uh, no. I'm saying up to 2023. I disagree. And even then, it's still going to be there. I don't think it's going to... It's not going to go away like the CD or like vinyl. It, it, you, th you thought them shits was going to go away. Nah, I think it's... Nigga, go ahead, th Jeff. Think, think about it, bro. Here's why I disagree with that. Storms have gotten bigger and more frequent. Weather has gotten more intense why would not viruses get more intent it is my belief that whatever this is Wilson ever. whatever it is mm -hmm. I don't think it's a turn on and off thing I think we either just said the same shit nigga hold, hold on I think <laughs> either mother nature is tired of the human being and is on the attack of the ones with the biggest carbon footprint, because if it wasn't, uh, uh, with regard, yes, with regard to go COVID, I'm gonna need these two anomalies explained. Uh, India, explain India to me, where you can literally, in India, anywhere you go, a dog can walk down the street and step in some human shit. Yeah. <laughs> Why is there an India? And two, 6th Street. I can guarantee you, I can take you somewhere downtown right now where I know these people are not getting their vitamin C and zinc every, every day. Right up on top of each other, nasty ass dope addicts shitting in the street who don't have COVID. If you could just explain those to me. Co COVID seems to be aimed at people who can afford rent. Because those are the people being inconvenienced the most when you think about it. Good old-fashioned, middle-of-the-road, meat-eating people who can afford rent are who is COVID's biggest target. If you are outside of that, you seem to be a bit safer. Let's just think about it. If you are homeless right now, you got a better chance of staying away from COVID than you do going about your day as a regular citizen. If not, why is not the street. Why aren't the streets littered with homeless dead bodies? If anybody could explain that to me, I'll and, leave it there. And, and, and there you go. Uh, I love it. I love it. You know, starting off with what you said earlier. If this shit was was natural, then I would be like, oh shit, the Earth is not. Is she not playing? Mother Earth is not bullshitting. Bruh. Like you said, with the infrequent uh, storms and the intensity of the storms, right? Yeah, I w I, w I would be a hundred percent. I'm I'm a hundred percent on the natural, organic earth shaking motherfuckers off. Yes. But let me tell you, when shit get weird, when man get involved to try to hack spirits DNA. Shit start going haywire for real. Because Earth is always going to find a balance. It's going right. to be like, oh, I need to get you niggas out of here. Okay. Category 17. 
for the first time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's a Category 17 uh, uh, hurricane over yeah. the Gulf of New Mexico. It's a uh, this is quite possibly and the largest shit we've ever seen in our lives, right? And then the shit will die down and shit will be cool. Earth will be like, all right, we had to kill motherfuckers, and now shit's cool. But when man gets involved, see, let me give you an example. Men get involved and start fucking with shit like plutonium. Well, this is some shit that'll never decay. Well, never, relatively speaking, it'll start decaying in 10,000 years. So what the fuck are we going to do with it now? Well, let's bury it. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? Well, like when men get involved, hey, let's create some shit for convenience. Plastic. And next thing you know, there's a big ass motherfucking plastic island in the center of an ocean somewhere. And, and, and motherfucking whales and shit is getting caught up in plastic. When men get involved, there's no equilibrium. There's no balance. So I believe man has gotten involved in COVID. You, how the fuck is it SARS, swine flu, HIV, Ebola? Why, how, what the fuck going on? Bruh. Talk to me now. Bruh, I love you. I love you. But the more I look, Remember when they used to talk about how, oh, it's a joke that everything is the white man's fault. I guess it's the white man this, the white man that. Name me a black problem, and I'll show you where it leads back to whitey. Well, how when do we When you disagree? say... What? When you say man gets involved and throws shit out of balance, uh-uh. Everybody in here know who the fuck I'm talking about, Jeff, but Let's your high clear. ass. I like to be clear. Let me be. Let Everybody me in here well, know exactly. Laid, ain't no niggas out here. Everybody you in laid here. The cake. Jeff. You laid the cake. Let me lay the goddamn icing. God damn the it, The Indian Jeff. was in total balance with the earth. <laughs> the African was in total balance with the earth, the Asian was in total balance with the earth. The only motherfucker talking about conquering it is the European. Really now? Talking about a uh, uh, man versus mountain. How the fuck you versus a mountain? Man versus nature. I'm never going to be versus nature. For what? I am nature. Are you not nature? Think that through. You can't say man <laughs> throws shit out of balance. The white man. Well, what about he this nigga? He used to get into this. Jeff, what about this nigga here? U.S. Embassy celebrates Nigerian doctor who helped Pfizer, the one they trying to roll out now, who helped Pfizer develop COVID-19 vaccine. This nigga don't look white to me. Huh? Huh? Say again now? The U.S. Embassy in Nigeria has celebrated, I ain't gonna be able to say his name, uh, Onyema Ogbu, whatever. I ain't gonna be able to say that last yeah. name. A Nigerian born researcher and medical doctor for his role in the development of a COVID 19 vaccine. Pfizer okay. and Biotech had announced that the first vaccine they developed against COVID-19 could prevent more than 90% of people from getting infected. Okay. The vaccine has been tested on 43,500 people in six countries and no safety concerns have been raised. Okay. Pfizer was quoted as saying it would be able to supply 50 million doses by the end of 2020 and around 1.3 million or uh, 3 billion by the end of 2021. This is a brother who did this, man. Okay. Okay. Would you like to, uh, uh, well, let's start with the word vaccine. And let's end with how many vaccines the Egyptians used. 
which I'm going to guess is around zero. So when you tell me about this brother and his search for a vaccine, this brother you have told me about, this brilliant, this obviously a standout. Come on. How many white boys did he beat his whole fucking life to stand there in that white lab coat? Of course he's brilliant. He's just brilliant and way down his oppressor's path because his oppressor, he is a master at the concept of his oppressor's concept of vaccination. But do we let that him off the hook? That is what I believe about him. We let him What's off that? the hook? He's huh? just do I let minion? him off the hook? No, I just I just described him on it. Okay. I just did away with the fact that maybe because I said all evil starts with Whitey, well, consider this brother. I did consider him, and I considered him highly articulate, intelligent, and mo and motivated in the wrong direction with regard to vaccine. Man, this shit is crazy. We don't know what the fuck we talking about. That's the beauty of this show. I try to tell motherfuckers, stay out the way. Don't believe shit mainstream media says without None. fact checking it. Right? Fact check it all. Read. Study. Right? How do you fact check? There's a lot of people out there, credible people, who are going against what mainstream media is saying. Don't believe either side, right? But study both sides, right? Become well-informed and stay the fuck out the way. God damn, it's, you, you know how many motherfuckers wanna get back to the goddamn turkey leg hut? Oh, that's hilarious. There's lines wrapped around the building, right? The turkey leg hut, right? Yes. Oh, there is such a place. You know, and it's a real place, nigga. Do you know how many motherfuckers? Hey, do you know how many motherfuckers want to get back to the Cheesecake Factory? Do you know how many motherfuckers want to get back to uh, a, a motherfucking AMC movie theater so they can they finger bang it, while they watching the movie? Brother, what the fuck are they going to do if this turns into Red Dawn? How how many of you are actually prepared to look at civilization in the rearview mirror? Nobody. If power goes out, if if how many of you are prepared to start setting up to get off grid and make your own power? First off, you got to have some place Niggas ain't got no place to be. They live somewhere. They live in an apartment. They listen, they don't own nothing. Niggas, they live in what? a house on a grid. Niggas ain't got no place that's theirs. Well. <laughs> uh ain't nobody ready. I uh this nigga high did a mother. No, I can't boy. say yeah, because there's some shit I, I can't say about <laughs> being ready. But you need to address that. You definitely need to address <laughs> being ready to leave and having a place to go. Wait, leave where? Right where you sit. Okay, being ready to get out of this position and go somewhere. And Oh, that's just basic, bro. Okay, so where is somewhere, my nigga? Wow. I can't for me. I can't tell you that for me. Well, no, not for you. I don't want to. Not for you. But I'm saying, as a template for somebody else. I'm not saying tell us where you would go, but as a template for somebody else, where would their, where would their somewhere else be? Where would their somewhere else be? Um. One, it needs to be together. Wherever it is, it needs to be together. Even if it is here. Even if you don't move, 
You need to be together. Um, with, with someone, with someone who can tell you with no compass, whether you are headed north, <laughs> south, east, or west with someone who, uh, knows how to start a fire with an ink pen with, uh, uh, with someone who knows how to kill with said ink pen with someone who understands how to connect up a shortwave radio. Right. With somebody, right. with somebody who knows how to take dirty water and make it into clean drinking water. Right. That's who you need to be together with. So you need be somebody together. that's skilled on the team in those things. You need to be meeting about that shit right now. Right. If you do not know, if you do not know somebody who knows how to grow their own food. Right. If you do not know someone who knows how to do carpentry work, right. how to do mechanical work, automotive right. work, that plumbing work, that you have come together in order to become a protective village to make a stand either where you stand or go somewhere to do it. If you don't have that, woe be unto you niggas that woke up this morning going, you know what, I think I need a gun, you hey, fucking hey, idiot. Brown. Hey, Jeff Brown. Huh? You need your own ground in order to grow your own food. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? Um, I'll talk to you later about, well, yeah, I guess I agree. Nigga, you just don't like agreeing with me, daddy. That's what it is. When you get high, you get ornery, nigga. You don't want to agree with nothing I say. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where Jeff at? You, Come back. <laughs> you gotta, you go, y'all gonna, your hustle is gonna be pr truly put to the test. <laughs> Hold right. on a minute, I got cotton mouth, my refrigerator right over here. That's where I be going. It's right <laughs> there. I'm going. Hold on. Oh man, this shit was one of the funniest fucking shows ever. That we beat Jeff's ass <laughs> like Jake Paul did Nate Robinson. <laughs> Jeff is out on his feet right now, boy. Again, uh, we've been pushing it real, real strong this show. Um, of course, we pushed all of the project, products. That's disrespectful. X Wolf, Soul Tox, Total Package Energy, Hurricane Report. We have been pushing a lot of projects, but let me just say, man. Please, please, please get to my website here, zowhatmasterclass.com. Please, please, please sign up right now. We're trying to get to 300 signups today. I think we got two. <laughs> we, uh, this Cyber Monday sale is a special sale. You're going to get 50% off. The sale ends at 11.59 p.m. on November 30th. That's tonight. Five and a half hours of content, lifetime access, four modules, exercises and toolbox, 50% off discount code Cyber Monday. Get there right now. We appreciate everybody who hit the super chat, who hit uh, everybody's individual cash apps. Please hit Jeff's cash app for his classic high. This was giraffe balls for real, <laughs> nigga. This, I don't this think This right so. here. This was I'm, draft balls inside of I'm gonna the have to go back and look show. at this because I don't see it that way. But of Nigga, course, you, I'm high. I'm the high one here. You're not high? I'm the high one here. Are you high or not? Who, right now? Yes. Um, dude, my tolerance now is so strong because of how much I have smoked for such a protracted period of time that no, I am not off the rails high. This, I meant, this is a I high that, answer, nigga. <laughs> I meant that shit I said. Be together. Even if you can't get away from here, be together. The but point is have a plan. You have started plan. it by saying go somewhere, nigga. I can't tell you where to go. You gotta know that already. <laughs> I can't tell you where to go. Uh, you got to know that already. 
You better know where you're supposed to go because I can't tell you where. If you I'm don't know, going. <laughs> yeah, here's, here's where to go. Here's where Even to go. If you, if you don't here, know you where to go, be, you better go somewhere within here. If you don't know where to go, <laughs> men, men, and women, oh, under shit. the sound of my voice, call family meetings, serious family meetings. Leave your uh, all your cell devices in one room right? and y'all take a walk down the street to the park and sit there and talk about what the fuck you gonna do cause it's coming <laughs> and whatever that is let the people who make sense make sense get over that shit you got with who over over what over that shit's over it's over all that mad at your baby daddy it's over they coming Hell yeah, because niggas going to need a team to get through this motherfucker. That's Jeff, what I'm telling you to do. What's your and cash gonna... app, Jeff? Tell them, man. Y'all, hey, this was the greatest fucking high Jeff ever. Please show your love and support. Everybody send Jeff Brown $5 right now to his cash Thanks app. So dollar much. sign, GB Funny Style. What is it, Jeff? Hit up the Burgundy Matrix, if you would, with uh, dollar sign, GB Funny Style. <laughs> Uh, hey, also show my girl Sarah some love. I oh, really now. appreciate Sarah for being here every Monday, for making this shit happen, for getting this shit together. She runs all of the tech. That's the third leg. That's we the appreciate third leg, man. It. Dollar sign Sundays with Sarah. Also, show your brother Zoe Williams some love. Man, if y'all could do it, do that masterclass, right? ZoeWhatMasterclass.com. But if you can't, Hit my cash app. Show me a little love. Show me a little appreciation. Dollar sign, zo what netter. Right? Dollar sign, zo what netter. Show us a little appreciation. Again, we don't claim to know everything. We don't have no, all the okay. answers. A lot of time, our shit is fucking scattered and all over the place. But we do appreciate you tuning in this Monday. And we'll be back next Monday with an entirely new fucking current event show based off of the fuck shit that happened then. Yes. So, hey, Jeff, man. Huh? Can I say something before yes, we go? Yes, you can, brother. Uh, I think I have an appropriate nickname uh, for Sarah. Oh, is Sarah it? is the third rail. Yeah. You know how in the train, you got the train. The train is full of passengers. Everybody ready to go, but that some bitch don't move without the power. You know where the power come from? The third rail. <laughs> Right there. That's your shit, Sarah. The third rail in that big ass train. That's it. Nigga, what? I'm fucking mad as shit. <laughs> Niggas the I'm for real, Sarah. When I call you the third rail, nigga hit that train shit. Every time you hit third rail. Okay. Hit it, nigga! Third oh. rail! <laughs> I run a goddamn train right through this subject. This shit I'm dumb done. as hell. <laughs> if you play the goddamn train ever again, my nigga, this is <laughs> the Chattanooga Choo Choo nigga, don't. No. What the uh. fuck? <laughs> the Silver Streak nigga, niggas is in here. <laughs> niggas is in here. Wild and Jeff Hyde. Motherfuckers is in here, dumb as hell. Thank you, dig it. Niggas is wild as hell. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Okay, cool, niggas. This has been a long one. Hey, thank Ow. everybody. All aboard. <laughs> yes, sir, boss. We got. Sir. You remember? You remember Malcolm on the train? <laughs> Denzel is Malcolm on the train. Yes, boss. You you's a happy nigga today, ain't you? Yes, boss. We got cheese sandwich. We got we got we got croissants. We got coffee. We got everything. I'm just very happy. Nigga. I'm a happy nigga today. Right? What the fuck? I'd like to keep my feet on the ground today, as in not swinging from a tree. Midnight I'm happy. train to Georgia, nigga. What the fuck? Okay. Thank you guys. We appreciate you all. Hey, seriously, let's get those Masterclass Cyber Monday sales up. I want to shout everybody out that, that has uh, supported it. If you do it, I'm going to try to shout you out. Thank you so much. We appreciate you all. Nothing but love, nothing but appreciation, and we out. Deuces. <laughs>